Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're continuing our series of conversations with the most influential women in barbecue with Cassie Strohmeyer, pitmaster of competition barbecue team, Smoke on the Water. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Hi, Cassie. Long time no see. Joke, just saw you last weekend. Welcome to the confessional. Welcome. Thank you very much. And one thing I just got to say is I'm not a pit master. I'm just a barbecue cook. Like, I mean, I I don't agree with that term. So I, I I'm think just going to put, put that straight there. Yeah, no, I'm not a pit master. Okay. All right. All right. Well, then I'll just uh, uh, barbecue a fish in an auto. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Meat it's enthusiast. better than what I call myself anyway. Oh, yeah, we are always our own worst enemies, aren't we? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, I just want to say thank you very much at, at the top of the show. We were just talking off air. You're a bit unwell at the moment. You're actually in ISO, so I appreciate uh, you taking the time. And if you do need to pause at any time, get a drink of water, just let me know, and then we'll keep rolling because uh, I plan on making you talk a bit. All good. Not a problem. Okay. All right. So um, I, I, I always kick things off with a, with a quick question. What was the last thing that you barbecued? Uh, not, not for competition, because I know that you are a, a competitive uh, barbecue cook. What did you last barbecue for your dinner, for your lunch, for something you wanted to eat for yourself? Uh, probably potato bake. Interesting. Because, yeah, because sometimes I'll just shove one of those on if I'm doing a catering gig just for myself for the next day or so. Um, otherwise it's just a steak or something easy like that. Oh, right. Okay. Tell me a bit more about this potato bake. I can't actually eat them because, uh, I, I can't mm. eat cheese, but I like to live vicariously through other people. Yeah. Well, it's really, really easy. It's just your layers of potato, onion, and then just some, uh, French onion soup and, uh, cream. And I actually cooked that in the smoker and with a big potato bake, it takes five to six hours at 250 Fahrenheit and it gets really creamy. And in the last hour, you shove your cheese on and it's beautiful. Oh, okay. Interesting. So the cheese isn't actually like through the sauce and everything? No, no, it's at the very end. So you could actually eat it without the cheese. Yeah, I could make one without putting cheese on it. I didn't realise it. I the, the way I'd seen it made in the past was that the cheese was kind of mixed in with the French onion soup mix. No, no, I don't do that. And generally one of those really big trays, it uses two 600 mil things of cream. That's wow. it. Wow. Okay, yeah. interesting. So useless. Yeah. And is that your favourite side or do you, uh, do you like to uh, put together some other sides as well? Oh, I love food full stop. Hey, look at the size of me. Um, they say fat's full of flavour. I'm full of flavour. But um, absolutely love like my coleslaw. I love the mac and cheese. I love um, even corn cobs. Just keeping it simple because you need something to break up the richness of the uh, barbecue if you're having it with barbie. But, I mean, I love cooking all sorts of different things, not just barbie anyway. Okay. What, what other cooking styles are you into? I love baking. I do slices. And um, when I had an operation last year, I was doing macarons and I was doing chocolate eclairs and everything. So I thoroughly enjoyed doing all of that sort of thing. I enjoy doing my own like chutneys and relishes and that sort of stuff as well. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I I had no idea that you're into that. My grandmother used to make the most amazing tomato relish and that recipe has been passed down to my father and my aunt now and every time they come for Christmas there's two more jars of relish that they give us and that gets put in awesome. the cupboard. Awesome yeah. yeah it's the best especially if you've got loads of tomatoes making your own bolognese sauce like I mean I've got stuff there from like 12 months ago. Yeah one of the favorites in our house the the only thing that I seem to be able to grow at the moment is uh, cayenne chilies and so I've started oh, making my okay. own chili jam. And Excellent. it goes on everything. Yeah, well, the other half loves putting chilies just in pickled onions. And okay. he's got, like, just reuses the juice, reuses the juice, reuses it. And that becomes so hot, I don't even kiss him after he's eaten one or two of them. Oh. <laughs> 
Fair enough. I can certainly understand that. I um, I mm-hmm. made the mistake uh, last time I did it of um, I had the gloved hand and a non-gloved hand, and the, the gloved hand was doing the the scraping, and the non-gloved hand was just holding the 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 chilies from the outside, right? And I didn't even use my fingers. I rolled my hand over to the back of my hand and just rubbed some sweat off my uh, off my forehead, and must have just touched my eye. And my wife had to actually get a little uh, a little glass full of milk and hold my eyeball open and pour milk into my eyeball. So oh no, you're lucky you didn't go for a pee. That would have been even worse. Yeah. Oh god. Because you met. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Di- dipping that in milk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now we um we first met at uh, at Burley in 2018, and you had organised a class with Sterling Smith. Are you still uh, organising international uh, guests to come over and visit us? Oh no, I was just um like because I'm also sponsored by GMG and Sterling's like the face of GMG in America. Um, I sort of like just sort of took him under me me wing and sort of like he borrowed a heap of my gear and all that sort of thing, which is what you do to visitors. And, um, yeah, because I had a few contacts, I just sent people emails just telling them that, hey, Sterling was here, um, and GMG asked me if I could just send out a thing. I never actually organised much. I just basically cleaned up after him and um, just had everything there ready for him. So, yeah. I'm too busy doing my own stuff now, so. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that at all. Well, look, that that was a really great experience for me. That was the first real sort of barbecue lesson that I ever went to, and it was uh, it, it was really good. And um, immediately, I put what I learned to use at that uh, at that 2018 Burley comp, and ended up. I think we finished fifth or something overall, something like that. Anyway, awesome. it was a top That's ten fantastic. finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I'd, I just wanted to give you a very belated thank you for organising that for me. Oh, not a problem. I still get the scissors out and trim me pork ribs like that. Yep, yep. I even used it on the salmon that I smoked up for that entry for that uh, burly competition. Fantastic. Did all the edges around the salmon, yeah. Yep, same here. Great stuff. Now, we just uh, were hanging out last weekend at Meatstock Toowoomba. So tell us a bit about your experience there. Oh, well, I entered SCA. Um, I didn't do the stakes. Mind you, I collected my stakes and took them home. But <laughs> I... Free stakes, why wanted, Exactly. They're still in the freezer, so I've got some awesome stakes for while in ISO. <laughs> and, um, but what I did was I entered all the ancillaries and I just did some weird things i knew that my burger was either going to be a hit or miss but it didn't come too bad i think that was just middle of the road and i did the hot dog and um i did the bacon dessert and i also did the jalapeno popper inspired entry as well so i did all those and really really proud i got a second with the um with the popper entry so very very happy with that because my aim was to go to Toowoomba and just have a consistent cook and get one top 10 finish out of everything that I did. And I managed to do that. So that's all that matters. Um, I must admit that I was a little bit disappointed with some of the um, ABA scores and that that I did, because some of it was actually the best that I'd actually entered, but I got the worst scores I ever received. So it's just like, yeah, well, I'll just move on and yeah. All good, not a that's, problem. So that's the luck of the table, sometimes, isn't it? Oh, I think I've got judge six on all of them. <laughs> possibly, possibly. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, my chicken was a dud. The it never worked out how I wanted to do. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and go back to what I used to do. Mm. Um. So yeah, but it's all a learning experience, and that's all that matters. And I go there to have fun, catch up with people. And um, just spread the barbecue love. Like there were people from Gladstone that actually came down and um, wow. said good day, and people that had been to my classes had come and said hello as well. So I was actually really, really happy. So you actually had a cheer squad drive down from Gladstone just to cheer you on at the competition. That's yep. amazing. Congratulations. Yep. That's so good. 
Thank you. Yeah, um, I was really surprised. And so, yeah, and it's awesome hearing people saying that they put your principles into practice and that they haven't stuffed up their barbecue ever since. And so that's what it's all about. It is, yeah, saving them time, saving them money and helping them have a, uh, helping them make new memories with their family out in the backyard is what it's all about. Oh, exactly. The wives are so happy because the husbands are now cooking for them. So they're extremely happy. So good. So good. I want to circle back to something that I heard you say about the SCA. You didn't cook the steaks. Do you, do you regularly go to an SCA and then not do the S? That was only my second time doing SCA. The first time I did SCA was at um, Kandari in 2021 and I came dead last in stakes. So I was actually a little bit scared and I'd watched some YouTube videos and I was talking to the person whose videos I watched because it was promoted as being SCA comp thing. And I said, I followed it to a T, it looked perfect, but I came dead last and they were so embarrassed. And they said, Cassie, you don't follow that. You come and ask me and I would have given you the tips. And oh. so now so now we're actually, because I spoke to this person at Meatstock and it was really quite funny um, because he was like, oh, that was so long ago. And he said, you should have just come and spoke to me about it. So, um, yeah, uh, the next time I plan on doing um, steak, hopefully, whenever the next SCA is. Yeah, right. Okay, I can see. Uh, I can see why you wouldn't want to go back and follow those same instructions. <laughs> a bit embarrassing, oh, though, no. that that uh, that that video is out there and it didn't oh, work. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But I mean, that's okay. Like, I mean, I've learned. And as soon as I had a chat to this person on what to do, I went home. I wrote it on me notes, like back at me site. So I'm all right. I've ordered the products. I've ordered this, that, and the other. So I know what I'm doing now. Oh, okay. So next time, everybody better watch out. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I actually don't have a lot of confidence with my own flavours and and all that sort of thing. I sort of like second guess myself a lot. So I ask for a lot of people's approval that what I'm actually doing is right. Okay. All right. Yeah, which is really weird. So like I mean, with the jalapeno popper thing, like – um. A lot of people tried that at Toowoomba and they absolutely loved it. And I got a second place for that one. And I've actually just yesterday, it was recommended to me by somebody to enter it into the World Food Championships, which are being held in Sydney and Melbourne. So I've done that. So now I've just got to wait and see whether I've been shortlisted. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I was actually going to ask about them because when I arrived on Thursday night, the first three people that walked up to me and said hello said, you got to go talk to Cassie about her her poppers. They were amazing. Oh my god, it's so incredible! So I was going to actually ask you to tell us a bit about these uh, these poppers that you put together. Well, I think I sent you a photo of them. Um, they're the chocolate dome things. So oh. um, yeah, that was my. Um, they're actually with chocolate um, as a dome, and then I made my own jalapeno ice cream, and then a jalapeno jelly. Uh, more ice cream, and then a Biscoff biscuit base. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I was really, really happy with that. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't doubt that for a second. That sounds absolutely incredible. And I didn't actually realise that that was, um, that that was what you were uh, showing me in the, in the photo. I, had, I didn't actually put the two things together. That's incredible. Yeah. I'm just trying to so – I'm just loading up your uh, – your message here so I can get a look at this. And by the way, everyone, this is Hank. Oh. He's one of my three birds. I was going to say you were looking very piratey today. Oh, yeah. Arr, me hearties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, I've just got these up on, uh, up on my screen here. Um, let me see if I can just bring them in over on a screen share. There. Yep, that's the little blighters. Yep, there they are, looking beautiful. Incredible. So for the for the listeners, this is terrible audio for the people that are going to be tuning in on the uh, on the audio platforms. Um, they look like little little chocolate domes on a on a bed of crushed 
uh, biscotti biscuit in the in the base, little jalapeno rings sitting on top of the the biscuit base, and then um, as Cassie was just saying, there's little scoops of ice cream, and they're all matching. They're all exactly the same size, diameter, shape, which is phenomenal. Um, and what's on top, Cassie? Is that it, it looks like gold or something? Yeah, it's gold edible leaf. Ah, okay, there you go. Gold edible just, leaf. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a pop, make it look a bit different. And the reason why I had to put the biscotti or biscoff base and all that on the um, bottom of the box was I had to raise it up, otherwise the little things wouldn't fit in there. Cause I, because you know how the sides go inwards a little bit at the base and they're bigger at the top? I had yeah. to sort of give them a little bit more height so that it could fit in the box. Oh, right, mm. okay. And yeah, because the, the judges don't look at the decorations on the base of that. Ah, okay, all right. And so what does, like, edible gold cost? Is like, does that make it an incredibly expensive box? Um, not really, because I got a whole heap of it for, like, 20 bucks, which would do about another 1,000 little domes. So it wasn't that expensive. Wow. Okay, 20 bucks. For edible gold. There you go, folks. So SCA Glory, go get yourself some edible gold. Yeah, so those are the little suckers I'm going to try and enter into the World Food Championships. Well, I dare say that those are going to do really well. We're just getting yeah, some well, Facebook it's... comments come through here. So incredible. Looks unreal. Yeah. Yeah, well... They tasted pretty good. I hadn't even done a trial of those beforehand. It was like, well, let's see if they work. And, um, yeah, it blew some people away. So that was good. And apparently I lost a point with appearance and a point for execution. So I don't know what the heck I could have done to make it any better. How do you lose, like, exec- like a, a point for appearance or execution on that? I don't know. You That's... tell me. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm not. I, I don't even know what to what to say to that. That's maybe, that's one of the best I things I've ever seen. Yeah, maybe I need to get my rings right in the base of the box. I don't know. Oh, maybe they weren't all exactly the same size. Yeah, maybe I got no idea. They're not meant to judge that, but I mean, judges are a different people. So, yeah, you don't know what's going through their head, what their expectations are. So. I knew that it was either going to be good or it was, or it was going to flop because it was a jalapeno popper inspired. So mm. I really lent on that inspired uh, wording. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, look, it's it's really cool. That's such a creative thing that you came up with there, and I reckon if you did take that to the World Food Championships, you'll do really, really well. Yeah, and it it was actually Lucas Armstrong that actually uh, pushed me to do it. He goes, "Yeah, you should do it." Ah. So, yeah, because he's, he's actually said that it's one of the tastiest things he's ever put in his mouth. Yeah, So right. that's pretty big coming from him because he's a, a legend of the barbecue scene in Australia. So He's, he's one of the top tier players, yeah. That's, that's a huge compliment. Exactly. So, mind you, I did take in passion fruit slices as well for meat stock. He brought one of them off me. Okay. I do love yeah. a good passion fruit slice. I wish I'd known that. I would have... Uh, I would have grabbed some as well. Ah, oh, well, next time. Next time, indeed, indeed. Now, mm. still still on the topic of, of Meat Stock Toowoomba, you were actually part of the peer group that was involved in judging for the ABA Awards. Can you tell us a bit yes. about, what, about what your role was in that and how that worked? Well, pretty much I was nominated by some lovely person and um, as far as I know, it went to the committee and they all agreed that, yeah, that was okay to have that person as a peer person. And then I was basically sent via email um, who to judge and it was basically people from in the barbecue community, whether they be the restaurants or teams or whatever it was, Um, because I forget the different categories that I actually judged because it was a little while ago. But, yeah, we were given the options on who to pick and so uh, we could do it in the comfort of of our own home and just um, send our answers in and that was it. It was all anonymous and um, that way we had a voice for the people like that we are with all the time. Mm. 
Yeah, so it was a it, it, it was an anonymous peer vote to select yep. from the short list. Um, yep. That had been picked by the by general the, community. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I I uh, love that that process. I thought that was a great touch there. Um, it was now, very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you uh you mentioned um off air uh yabbies. You have a bit of a thing for yabbies. Yeah, I enjoy yabbies. Um, the other half, he's actually in the lounge room at the moment because we're in ISO. It takes him two hours each yabby pot, but he's making some yabby pots because at work he's got a few dams he can use. And last time, just with our standard yabby pots, um, he caught 50 or so. So they're in the freezer and we're going to actually um, get some more and then we'll just cook them up in a garlic brandy creamy sauce and have it like we do with surf and turf with prawns yeah nice nice you're getting uh you're getting some thumbs up out here some facebook people awesome. putting comments in thumbs up that sounds like a good way of doing it now do you yeah, um well, do you flush them like like do you uh yeah you put them, them in, in clean water yeah you put them in clean water so that they can basically crap out the um the crap from inside them and that way they can um you don't get all that grit and that sort of thing they're all clean properly and that before we freeze them right nice nice I've, I've always wanted to get hold of some yabbies we used to have some dams on the farm i grew up on as kids and we'd steal mum's stockings and cut the foot off the stockings and throw throw a little bit of meat in there and then tie it up with some string and just uh chuck it in and then you'd feel the little tug and pull them out because their little claws get stuck on the stockings yeah yeah, no, Shane's in the back and he's just like, he's very precise. He's got his tape measure and he's got his wire, so he's happy. Beautiful, beautiful. Look, that's a good point for us to just pause for a little minute. We're going to uh, take a short break and we'll be right back. In our modern lives, there are some things we need more of. More time, more money, more love from family and friends. Here at Smoking Hot Confessions, we believe all that can be done through barbecue. If this sounds like you too, then you're going to want to keep the last weekend of July free because we are bringing you Barbicon. Barbicon is a two-day virtual event with the sole purpose of helping you save time, save money, and become the envy of your family and friends. We're bringing the best barbecue pitmasters and business owners from around the country live into your living room. They're going to show you not only what they do, but how they do it. If you're a backyard barbecuer, we're going to shorten that learning curve, eliminate the ruined meals going into the bin, and cement you as a barbecue legend among your family and friends. And if you're a barbecue business owner, we're going to share all the shortcuts to success, the tips and tricks to trim your budget and maximize profits, and build a thriving business that will help you take care of all your loved ones. Pre-registrations are open now, so hit the link in the description, bang in your details, and you'll be the first to be notified as soon as the early bird tickets are available, any specials that we're running, when we announce presenters, freebies, and more. So I'll see you there. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. All righty, Cassie, we're back into uh, segment two here. and. Uh, in segment two, I thought we might sort of focus on uh, some of the some of the more businessy aspects that you do with smoke on the water. And I was just talking with uh, Kerry from the uh, Women of Low and Slow Barbecue Australia group yesterday, and she mentioned that you're going to be doing some expert sessions um, f- coming up in that group. There, tell us a bit about that. Well, um, nothing's been formalised yet, but we have been discussing over the last couple of months about um, just women supporting women in the barbecue world um, because sometimes it can be quite confrontational when you've got a big group of guys, they do the macho act and, um, like, you end up feeling not not exactly denigrated but you don't feel um, as confident to ask questions in that sort of environment. So we've produced a safe place where women can ask these questions without the fear of harassment or denigration. And so I'm more than happy to put my hand up and help support. Um, we still need to finalise some of the details, but, yeah, it's just a safe place for women. I've got their shirt on as we speak. Oh, very good, very good. 
Yeah, so, um, yeah, but Kerry's done really well along with Linda Zamet from Pitts Perfect to actually um, provide this place for us. And I feel privileged in being classed as a group et- expert in there. Yeah, yeah. So do you know how you're going to do it? Is it going to be like a live video thing in the group or is it going to be an in-person class or...? No, it'll just be very similar to just a live chat, sort of like question answers or um, that sort of thing, yeah. Oh, very cool, very cool. Now, has this sort of uh, developed from your classes? Because I know that you do um, you do a whole bunch of classes and you were just mentioning yeah. in the first segment that your students actually followed you from Gladstone down to Meatstock in Toowoomba. So tell us yep. all about these classes that you do. Well, last year I even did classes in um, Emerald and um, Gladstone and Bundaberg. So, um, and it was actually some people from Emerald that were also following me as well down to Meatstock. So, um, yeah, I do. I personally don't like calling them master classes. I'm very, um, I don't know, I. Maybe it's because I put myself down a lot. Maybe I don't feel that I'm good enough, but basically I consider them just barbecue classes. I do not call them master classes. I'm not a pit master. I'm just a barbecue cook that knows how to teach people. And so in my classes, I actually teach people how to do um, separate the point from the flat of a brisket um, and how to turn the flat into slices, the burnt end, uh, the point into burnt ends. I also do lamb shoulder, pork shoulder, lamb rack, pork ribs, uh, reverse seared steak, um, chicken lollipops, chicken pieces, apple dump pudding, brownies, uh, dim sims and chipoladas. And I do two course, two classes in the one day. They go for four hours each and they get to eat everything and they get a really comprehensive handout on what I've actually taught um, on every single process. And I use uh, products from butchers, Coles, Woolies uh, Woolie and Aldi's so that barbecue can be taught that things can be accessed everywhere. It doesn't have to just come from a butcher. If you don't have a lot of money, well, that's okay. You can pick up some stuff from Aldi or from um, Woolies. Like it doesn't have to break the bank. You don't have to get a $150 brisket every time you want to do barbecue. Um, and even just keeping it family friendly, like with the desserts, with my brownies, like I teach them how to just use a packet LD mix, which turns out brilliant when you do it in the smoker. Um, it doesn't have to be hard. And um, like with the instructions, like I've the only class I've ever been, like I wouldn't even call it a class, was that um, information session that Sterling gave. Other than that, I have not been to any formal barbecue classes, master classes or anything like that. So everything in the class is purely from my own um, sort of my own teaching, my own learnings, my own processes. And I make them quite intimate lessons as well. So there's only 12 to 14 people at the maximum each class. And um, it's in a very non-threatening place. Uh, people can bring some drinks if they want to do um, have a drink of alcohol, but I supply all the soft drinks, etc. And I have people coming back two and three times, not because I'm a horrible teacher, purely because they love the food. And they the wives come back and they're so happy because the, the husbands are actually not screwing up the piece of meat that they've gone and spent all this money on. And, like, a lot of people actually overcomplicate doing barbecue who cares if you don't inject every inch across? Get that moisture in there. Like, I mean, I have broken it right down so it's real. It's real stuff for real people instead of people having to look at YouTube, which I know YouTube and all that has a place, but I try to keep it as simple as possible so that they don't stuff up these pieces of meat and they can enjoy their their barbecue and I personally don't go into fire management or anything like that because why teach a group of people how to use a Weber kettle if they've all got pellet grills or if they've got a bullet like I mean I tell people you can get that information purely off of YouTube and that but I'm here to teach you how to deal with the protein. If you can keep your smoker at a certain temperature you are fine and dandy you'll be able to get exactly the same 
result is this. And I've had people that have commented on my lamb racks. Um, they're, they're even better than what they've had at the Moulin Rouge in France. And they won't eat lamb anywhere else. So, wow. I mean, yeah. And the thing is that I just use Aldi lamb racks. So, and I show them the packaging and everything like that. And I have a lot of partners that they say, you have made it, they seem to overcomplicate it and you've made it easy for us. We don't need to stress. And I make sure at the end of it that, like, I tell people don't bother eating before you come because it's basically a barbecue degustation because you have a little bit of everything and by the end of it, you get a full meal, whether it be lunch or dinner, and you are absolutely stuffed. And people go, ho, 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 I don't need to worry about that. I had a full breakfast and I'll be right. At the end of it, they're taking their dessert home because they can't fit it in. <laughs> and so, I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool. And the thing is that, like, my classes in March, they were sold out in December. But at the end wow. of the class, I actually, yeah, I've got a wait list and everything like that. So, I mean, people actually enjoy, enjoy it. I don't promote, promote myself stupidly, but I've got great support from, um, there's another barbecue team here in Gladstone, Macca, Macca with Husey's Q. And like, we've got a great respect and understanding for each other. And, um, like I helped him set up with his food licenses and all this sort of thing. So, I mean, I don't do markets. I don't do pop-up stores. I just do my barbecue classes and I thoroughly enjoy doing them um, because I'm so proud of actually showing people how to do barbecue and how to do it well and how to grow the community. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, but at the very end of the class, I actually go around and I sit down with every single person that's in the class and ask them if they've got any questions specifically to their own smokers or anything they enjoyed, anything they need clarification on. So I keep myself very open to to communication from everybody. Yeah, it sounds like a great way of doing it. So I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a couple of questions here just sort of breaking down everything that you just said. So it, it's two four-hour classes in one day. So you get different, so like people come and go or do people book both classes and then stay all day or how do you find the, the customers take it up? All those, all those proteins, I do two classes involving each of every single thing that I told you. So they're exactly the same classes. The same class goes from nine to one, and then I do exactly the same class from three to seven. So you do all those different things that you listed in one four-hour yep. window twice in one day. Yep. Yes. That's a lot. That's a it lot. Is. It is. It is huge, and I'm absolutely knack at the end of the day. Um but it's all set up. I think I gave you photos of how it's all set up. Like it's set up like a classroom and people can come and follow me out to where the smokers are if they wish to. But I consider it adult learning. Like I'm not there like a teacher to tell people, oh, come on, let's go here, let's go there. People are adults. They can make their own decisions on what they want to learn. So, yeah, yeah it's like, well, I tell you there's a couple of minute break. After that couple of minutes, I'll just start talking about my own stuff that I have to talk about to get through the lesson. And, um, yeah, but everyone enjoys it. Uh, people have brought gift vouchers for their children or for relatives that have been really interested in it. But, um, yeah, Macca, he'll even refer people to come and see me. So it's pretty awesome. That's like there's amazing. no animosity there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a yeah. lot of mutual respect there. So. That's great. Yeah, I've I've got a lot of time for Macca as well. He's a fellow martial artist and is uh, you know, it, developing himself through his study of martial arts as well. So we uh we talk about barbecue, we talk about martial arts, we have a good time. Now, the next question that I wanted to ask you was about your marketing of those classes. You said that you don't really do much. What do you do? I mean, like you must do something if they're selling out 4 months in advance. How how do you promote um, these just, classes? Just on a just on a couple of the local social pages on Facebook, on my Smoke on the Water page and word of mouth, that's it. Uh, what I do is people that have sent me an expression of interest after the classes are filled, I actually will send them the link a week before I make it all public 
okay, to book classes. So the, the people that missed out last time can have first dibs in booking it. And I make it quite clear to them that I will be opening it up to everybody else in a week's time. So, um, so yeah, and on the um, Facebook Gladstone Food Raider, I do it there. At Emerald, um, the homebrew supply shop there, will actually, they do all the promoting on their socials and that sort of thing. And we've had some word of mouth classes there. In those classes, I do 30 people in one session um, for the four hours. Um, it is full on. Um, in that one, we do beef ribs normally. Um, but of course there's more of the shop staff that actually help me up out with clean up and all that. They sort of pay me just an appearance fee to do my thing and um, yeah, so that's how it all works. But I try to promote whatever products I can get locally from within my classes. And what sort of range of, of local products do you have available there up in Gladstone? Well, we've got the um, Gladstone Camping Centre. They smell, they smell, they sell all your rubs and smokers and all that. Like they've got Weber, they've got GMG, they've got Traeger. And um, so they've got the full uh, whole heap of rubs and that sort of thing. They've also got lanes. Um, and I know recently from Meat Stock, um, to warm the barbecue mafia are keen to come on board with me as well. So um, to help promote their products. So Hark are their distributors um, for their rubs and that. So the camping centre will be able to get those rubs in stock for them as well um, because that's it's Hark G&G have actually sponsored me down in Melbourne. So, yeah, I'm very, very lucky. But I also, you've got Reuben Smokers, you've got um, Farmyard Pet Supplies. Uh, they also have some rubs on that. But, of course, there's a couple of things that you have to get online um, that you just can't get locally because we are sort of seven hours drive from Brisbane, so it is a fair distance. Sometimes you just can't get what you want exactly. Yeah, but the yeah. range is, but it is increasing um, every time you look around. Mm. Now, did you just say that the pet store sells barbecue products? Isn't that a bit, um, a bit, uh, yeah, they, contradictory? It, it's a, <laughs> not, not really. Like, I mean, it's a stockyard sort of stuff. Like they sell, they've got a special, uh, smoker section put aside. Like they still sell like all your stock feeds and medications and all this sort of thing. They're out at Calliope, which is 15 minutes drive from Gladstone. And yeah, they um, promote some stock as well. Oh, okay. So it's a bit more like a, like an agricultural co-op than like a, a pet store where you're going to yeah. go in and buy yeah. a pet kitten and stuff. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not roasting the cats that we get from there. Yeah, I was a bit worried where that was going there for a second. I was, uh, yeah, I, I just had no. to make sure that all the kittens and the puppies were going to be fine. Yeah, there's a butcher next door to them, so you can get your meat from there. Yeah, yeah, very good setup. Now, the uh, the, the other thing that, that you do, like, there's so many different things that you do, is catering as well. Give us a bit of a yeah. bit of a rundown on your catering operation. I, well, I just do some small private things, um, like uh, just. 21st birthday parties, 70th birthday parties. I've got my other half's work in June are having a um, stakeholders um, party thing on a Friday and they've asked me to cater for that. So, yeah, I'll provide a bit. Most of the time it's my drop-off service, so I'll provide, like, all the – it's not your um, – yeah, prim and proper sort of service so much because most of the time the other half's working of a Saturday, so it's usually just me. And so I have to keep it easy and maintainable for myself to do. So I pretty much will cook all the meat, have the coleslaw. Um, slices are a big thing for afterwards because you don't need plates. You don't need, um, like, people want something small but sweet after having a rich, heavy meal of barbecue. So... I do my own caramel slices and um, nothing's pre-made. It's all um, made with love from me. So it's all home style cooking and um, like no pre-packaged rubbish at all. 
So I'm not going to duck down to bid food and get a cheesecake from there. Like, I mean, if people want a cheesecake, I'd make the cheesecake. Um, but I generally people go for the slices, so they get them, and it's my drop-off service. So they get the meat, the coleslaw, the cheese slices. All the bread rolls are cut in half, ready to go. All the paper, all the trays and cutlery, and it's just basically drop it all off, have it all set up as if I was going to get a burger myself and potato bake usually goes with it and maybe some weeds, which is salad. Um, so that generally all goes well. And then I even do the homemade barbecue sauce and it's in a drink bottle that, that they keep. Wow. And, yeah, so it's full on drop off. I don't need to go back there for anything. I love the if sound of that. Want- if people want me to stay there and cook on site, then, yeah, I can do that, but it's going to cost them. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do, do many of them actually say to you, like, hey, we, we want you on site, we want the spectacle of the smoker here and all that sort of stuff, or are they just more interested I, in the not, end product? They're more interested in the end product because they don't want me turning up at 3 o'clock in the morning, seriously. Um, and, like, I don't go over 100 people, so it's – a lot smaller um i'm keeping them to manageable sizes um like if i needed more um help or something like that i'd probably ask maca hey do you want to give me a hand or something like that because we've got that sort of relationship where we can do that um but at this point in time it's just been i think since isolation things have come into place the whole um how people are doing things has changed a lot and the cost of food and pr- produce has gone through the roof. So it's costing a lot more for people to do it. So they're keeping their functions smaller and a lot more intimate, just keeping them at home. So um, they don't want a thousand people in their backyard. They only want a small amount. Like I did a wedding a couple of weeks ago and that was for like 70 people. Um, but they said it was absolutely perfect because I don't do the prim and proper foods. I tell them straight that I just do good, wholesome, tasty food, something that's going to fill a hole, something that they don't get all the time. And, um, yeah, if you want prim and proper, I'm not the person for that because I'm not a dainty person, let's be honest. I've been doing barbecue scene for seven years. People know me by now. Yeah, you're a heartfelt cook in, in, in every sense of the term. You're not a, uh, a high tea uh, oh, no, silver I, glove or white glove service, whatever it is they call it. No, I, I can do that with my bakery bits and pieces, but thank goodness I haven't been asked to. I can't, don't have to pretend <laughs> to be prim and proper. Well then, well, then you'd have to go back anyway and then pick up all the, all the little towels nah. and things that they put all the little cakes on, and that's, um, nah, that's against your principles. That's not me. I'm not a delicate princess. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, the last thing that I did have to get in here, um, this was uh, something that, that I've seen you start doing on the at barbecue competitions for the last couple of years. You make and sell box warmers. Yep, Cassie's box warmers. I know you can take that however you want, whether your <laughs> minds are in the gutter or whatever. But, yeah, I... Um, I was sick of like in windy weather or you're going to your hand in and you get your smudgy finger marks on the outside of the box. So I wanted something that would protect it. But I also wanted to keep the temperature in there like a little bit warmer than by the time it got there with nothing surrounded by it. So there's actually a proper oven mitt material that's in the middle of them and it wraps around them and it is so awesome. I was so proud at meat stock about 30, 40% 30, 40% of the teams actually had my box cover warmer. And I'd say, nice cover. Wonder where you got that from. And, like, I mean, it's just awesome because I know what materials I've used. And, um, yeah, so I'm just really, really proud of them. Yeah, they look incredible. And uh, I'd, I'd imagine that that's what you use to get that ice cream, uh, the jalapeno ice cream up to the judges without melting. I used it for everything. I use what it you, for everything. What do you do when you do hand over that, that box full of ice cream stuff? Do you tell them, like, get this on the table as quick as possible or do you not say anything uh, and just hand yeah. it over and hope? I, I just or? say, yeah, I just said, hey, can we get this in there quickly? And that was fine. 
not a problem because they've got their own processes and the thing is that if it happened to melt in the middle of everything well that's my own fault for choosing a dessert that's likely to melt so that was the i'm just really glad that it wasn't a super hot day if it was a super hot day then i would have been running to handover and setting up right in front of where the handover was so yeah that's how i would have been able to do it otherwise i they would have melted everywhere yeah, you'd want to time it so you're at the opening yeah. of the window rather than later in the window, yeah. Exactly, yeah. But no, I made myself a um, staffy cover so because I've got two staffies. Oh, right. So, yeah, so that's my own personal one. Yeah, cute, cute. Yeah. And the good thing is that they're machine washable. So, like, I mean, I washed this after came back from meat stock and it's perfect. It's all ready to go. So good, Cassie. So good. I love those things. It's great to see that so many people on the scene are, are taking you up on them. Yeah, even Barbecue Asylum brought one, uh, Chloe and Shane. So that was awesome. Uh, Sonia, I think you've got a picture of her red and uh, white polka dot one. I yes. think I sent that one through to you. Yes. So that was pretty cool. Excellent. From Excellent. Signature, signature Smoke. Yeah. Yep, so good. Look, that's a good place for us to take a short break, and we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, folks, winter is just around the corner, but we have got you covered. Let us take care of you on those cold, dark nights out by the fire pit, and grab yourself a hoodie, grab yourself a beanie. If you're in Queensland, like myself and like Cassie, it's probably about the time where you're going to start putting the singlets away and start pulling out those thick winter t-shirts. We've got some of them as well for you. We've got our tumblers, which are going to keep your hot drinks hot and your cold drinks cold depending again if you're in Queensland or everywhere else. And uh, it's all on our shop, smokinghotconfessions.com slash shop. There's our beanies there. Our T-shirts and our hoodies have our award-winning Hail Mary design on them, best barbecue apparel of 2020 awarded by the NBBQA. And so head on over there, check them out. They are priced so that you help the show a little bit, but without being prohibitively priced. That didn't really... And Anyway, you, you know what I'm saying. Check them out, smokinghotconfessions.com slash shop. And stay warm this winter. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd Ben Arnott. Okay, Cassie, we're in the third part of the show now, and this is when our guests get to share some wisdom and impart some knowledge to the uh, to the to the listeners and the viewers. So I'm just going to sit back with a pen, take some notes while you teach us how to do something. Okay, well, the biggest tip I can give you is don't overcomplicate it. Barbecue is meant to be fun. You're meant to enjoy the process. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you screw it up, take it as a learning lesson. Um, figure out what you need to um, change for next time. Don't just put it in the corner and say, hey, I'm never going to do it again. Find out why it didn't work. Um, something I can share is I could share my apple dump pudding recipe what i do for that yeah <laughs> yep really really easy you get your medium size foil tray three tins of your smaller size pie apple and then you um sprinkle some cinnamon over the top of that then you get your one dollar butter cake mix uh from Woolworths or Coles, sprinkle one and a half packets of that over it and then you put slices of butter over the top of it into your smoker and it comes out beautiful. You get a really nice crispy top and you have it with custard or ice cream and it is the bomb. And after my classes, so many people actually go home, cook a reverse seared steak and do an apple dump pudding and everybody is happy. And the local scouts group, they actually... Um, use that when they're camping now because I do my classes through the scout um, hall, uh, D Dolphin Sea Scouts, and they actually came to one of my classes and they asked if they could use it for the scout camping. It's like, yeah, because it can be done in an oven. It can be done in a camp oven. So, yeah, it's wonderful. And you can use any fruit in it whatsoever. Yeah, it's very similar to your apple cobblers and all that sort of thing in America. But you don't mix it up. There's no extra um, dishes or pans that need to be washed up. It's just your one foil pan. That's it. Done and dusted. 
Love it. Yeah, I actually uh, went camping over New Year's just passed out at uh, out in the scenic rim and uh, took my little camp oven. And so now I've got my, my big meal size camp oven and I've got my little uh, cobbler camp oven and I did virtually the same thing um, I, yep. over a couple of nights. Peach one night and apple another night. Fantastic. Yep. But did you do the cake mix up as per the directions? Nope. 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 I... You just put the butter over the top of it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And it is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Really good stuff. The The first one, I um, I put too much cake mix in. And so instead of being like a nice layer of apple and then the little bit of cake on top, it ended up basically just being like a giant apple cake. Um, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Well, it took all night to cook because it was my first time doing oh. it, and, and I, I wasn't sure how my like how heavy to go on the coals, and I ended up yep. just shoving it in the fire and going to bed because I was too frustrated with it by the end of the night. But it was perfect by the morning, and then I I had this uh, this uh, whole little camp oven full of cobbler to eat for breakfast. Beautiful. And I bet you enjoyed it. I did. I did. It was really good. Really good stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, seriously, another tip I've got is if you don't have all your proper injections, just inject your meat with stock, with pork shoulder, just inject it with apple juice. You don't have to complicate it. All you want to do is get the moisture in there and let it do its thing. Uh, brisket, just inject it with beef stock. Just your cheap LD or Woolworths one. Use Woolworths one because that's actually gluten-free. So um, that's good for those ones out there that are celiac. So um yeah some useless information not useless information at all very helpful information very good stuff excellent i actually used to mix up my own beef injection using uh beef stock cubes vegemite and some powdered herbs so that it would all sort of stir up nicely and go into the syringe which was really good as well yep Exactly. And a really good thing with your um, pork shoulders is just buy the apple poppers because you want to put about a cup in and they're normally 250 mils. So there you go. There's your cup. Too easy. Too easy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about keeping things simple. So good. All right, look, that's probably a good point for us to start to, uh, to, to close out the episode. So I'm going to get you to give some shout outs, give some thanks, give some praise to people who've helped you out along the way. And uh, make sure that you tell everybody where they can track you down so they can get hold of some of those classes or follow you and get some of those uh, uh, box warmers, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, you can just, um, my Facebook page, if you just go all um, all together, no spaces, space, smoke on the water 43, um, then you can follow me page. I'm not cluey enough to do Instagram or any of that sort of stuff. So I might have to talk to someone. Um, but yeah, I'm sponsored by GMG Australia. Um, they've been awesome supports for me. Um, and also the local Gladstone Camping Centre. They've helped me with a lot of rubs of my pallets and that sort of thing. Um, Wallies, they help me with my garnishes for my hand in boxes, believe it or not. So that's a local, they're through B Mart. Um, who else can I talk about? Oh, well, of course, there's uh, Barbecue Mafia as well, who I'm getting on board with um, in the very near future. And, yeah, just follow my page. You'll just send me a message and about the box warmers. They're 40 bucks each if I see you in person. Otherwise, they're 50 bucks, which includes the postage. And I have a whole heap of different things. Like, I mean, I've done some special orders for people like Sonia's with the red with the white polka dots and I've done the Bulldogs one. Um, I've done some swearing inappropriate ones um, and I'm not a swearer. Like Barbecue Asylum got one that had a lot of swear words all over it. Um, but, yeah, it's really cool. Like if people have got special things, just message me. That's not a problem. I'm usually around on the barbecue sites. Yeah, right. Very good. Very good. Well, look, thank you very much for, for taking time out today to, to speak to me. I, I know that you're not feeling well, so I, I really appreciate you um, sort of rallying for us and sharing these experiences and your, and your wisdom and your knowledge with us. And I hope you get better soon and uh, you get to get some of those yabbies. They sound oh, great. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the plan once we're out of ice. So thank you for having us. You're welcome. I'm talking about, I'm talking about me and Hank, the bird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You take care. 
Okay, see you guys. Alrighty, folks, there it is. That was the one and only Cassie Strohmeyer. What a scream. She is great fun to hang out and, and talk to. So if you do run into her at a competition, she gets around to a lot of competitions. She does a lot of traveling for barbecue. So you will see her out and about. Make sure you say hello. She's got those fabulous sounding classes. She sells the box warmers. She's doing the expert sessions in that women's only group. So if you're listening to this and you are looking for a for a place to hang out and talk about barbecue um, in a in a more uh, female-friendly and non-binary person-friendly environment, do check out that group. That is the Women of Low and Slow Barbecue Australia. Cassie's quite involved in that group as well, and we did talk with Kerry recently as well, so you can check out that, that episode as well. But that was Cassie, Smoke on the Water, does a lot for the barbecue scene. As I said before, she organized that little session with uh, Sterling for us, and then I used what I learned there in that competition later that day and did pretty well with it. So huge uh, gratitude from me to Cassie for putting that together again as well. But that is it for today. So just remember, Barbicon, keep an eye on the Smoking Hot Confessions socials and on the Smoking Hot Confessions website. If you're not on our mailing list yet, head on over there. We're going to send you out a free ebook in return for your email address. And then when we do put up the early bird tickets, you'll be the first one to know. So you can jump on board, grab some of them. That's going to be really interesting. And also, if you'd like to support the show while you're at the SmokingHotConfessions.com website, head to the shop. We've got our t-shirts, hoodies, beanies, all that sort of stuff. It would support the show, really help us out, and we would love you forever. So, until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions. <laughs>